burner account because I have friends and family on Main. So let me add some pretext. My brother, 23, who I will call Greg and myself, 26, have never seen eye to eye. Greg is a high-functioning autistic individual. Greg is very aware of his autism and has always used it to manipulate his way out of situations. Greg also tends to be violent. I have never been able to stand being around him because of this. Try as my family might to get me to like him, I personally just like to keep my distance. Every holiday season, my family gets together with immediate family members and has a celebration Christmas Eve night. Every year I have complained about Greg being there, but not without reason. Greg has beaten my sister 21 and mother 47 black and blue before. Greg has threatened to harm multiple people multiple times. I've witnessed Greg biting and beating on our elderly babysitter growing up. Greg also tends to make questionable and inappropriate comments around people and has a short fuse. Greg has never gotten into serious trouble because of these things. And my family always says it's because he didn't take his medicine or he's just having a hard time, he doesn't mean it. This year is different though. This year, just a few months ago, Greg made severe death threats towards my mother and grandmother, 73. These threats affected me greatly because I knew if given the chance, he would absolutely go through with these threats. Even more so, my children and I live with my grandmother and I don't want his problems showing up at our front door. So I took it to the police. Before I made my report, I told my mother and grandmother I did not care if it made me look like the bad guy for making a report on my brother. I also told them this was the last straw and children and I will not go near him ever again, including holidays. Both agreed he had gone too far this time and understood I was serious and said I was in the right to say that. I told them I would feel completely betrayed if they went back to babying him after this and that he needed to take consequences for his actions. After the report, and a few days later, I was told my mother had a court date about the situation and that my brother was not arrested for it because he didn't take action towards the threats. After the court date, nothing still happened, and once again he got away with no punishment. And once again, my mother and grandmother started babying him again. Last week, my mother watched my youngest while I went Christmas shopping for the family. When I picked him up afterwards, I mentioned in brief that if my brother showed up at my grandmother's house Christmas Eve or at her house Christmas Day, me and my children would leave until he left. She told me she didn't understand why we couldn't get along for a few hours for the holidays, to which I replied that I meant what I said and my family would not be around him. I thought that was the end of that conversation. I was wrong. I got a text from my brother today calling me a prick saying that my mother didn't want to see my face and I am tearing the family apart and ruining the holidays for everyone. I promptly called my mother to ask her if that was true and was immediately responded to with yelling to my disbelief. She said I was controlling my grandmother's house and tearing her from her mother. She said she refused to be there for our annual family eve if my brother was not allowed to be there. She said, I am being stubborn and selfish and should be able to get along with him for four hours. I stopped her there. I replied, telling her I was doing none of those things. I said that I was gonna leave with the kids if he showed up. I never said he couldn't be there because it isn't my house, but I can choose to remove myself and children from there if I choose to. She said that wasn't going to work either and that her whole family had to be there or she, my father, and youngest sister weren't going to be there. I told her that it was cruel to do that to my grandmother because of a decision I made and am standing my ground on. At this point, I don't know what to do and am looking for an outside perspective on how to handle this whole ordeal. Edit, need to also mention that at the annual Christmas Eve gathering, there is myself, dad, and uncle. So my mother's reasoning is he won't do anything with people around. And if he does, we can stop him. I'm not a cop and it's not my job to stop him from being violent, nor do I want my children to see him have an outburst. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Your brother is an AH and your mom is trying to manipulate you to accept abuse. There are two possibilities concerning the behavior of your brother. 
One, he is violent, likes to hit people, and uses his autism as an excuse. So why should you want to be close to an hurtful AH? Two, his autism really affects him and he can't control himself. Therefore, he is dangerous. Why should you want to be close to a dangerous person? Either way, your brother is dangerous and not wanting to meet him means protecting your wife and children. If your mom and grandmother accept the abuse, well, what can you do? You need to support victims of domestic abuse, but at one point, they need to be the ones to take the first step, and they are not doing it. Comment 2. Not the idiot. You will be one, though, if you're in the ER Christmas night while your kid's arm is getting set because Uncle Greg decided he just couldn't control himself and attacked your child. You have every right, nay, responsibility to prevent known dangerous people from entering your home. If mom wants Greg there, she can host at her house. You'll send grandma in an Uber if grandma wants to risk getting her face beat in. Hopefully, nobody leaves moms in an ambulance. I would suggest contacting the police now and having Greg legally trespassed from the property. Then, if she shows up because mom invited him, you already have it set to call the cops and have him removed or arrested. Now for the update. A lot has happened since my last post, and I'm back on a burner account because things have gotten even more intense. I thought I had seen it all with my brother Greg, but these past two weeks have been a whole new level of chaos. After my last update, things seemed to calm down for a bit. My mom had stopped bringing up Greg's attendance for the Christmas Eve gathering, and I was hopeful that maybe, just maybe, she was starting to see my point of view. But boy, was I wrong. It turns out, during that quiet period, my mom was secretly planning to bring Greg to the gathering without telling me. I found out when my youngest sister, who's always been the peacemaker in the family, accidentally let it slip. She mentioned how Greg was looking forward to Christmas Eve and how mom had been helping him pick out a nice outfit. I was floored. After everything I had said, after all the warnings and the clear boundaries I had set, my mom was still choosing to ignore the danger Greg posed. It was like all those years of him getting away with his violent behavior had taught her nothing. I confronted my mom about it and she tried to play it off like it was no big deal. She said she didn't want to exclude anyone from the family, especially on the holidays. But I wasn't having any of it. I reminded her of the time Greg had lost his temper at our cousin's wedding, causing a scene that ended with the police being called. Or the time he had destroyed my room when we were teenagers because I had beaten him at a video game. But my mom just brushed it off, saying those were isolated incidents and that Greg had promised to be on his best behavior. I couldn't believe her naivety. It was like she had forgotten all the times Greg had promised to change, only to revert back to his old ways. The day before Christmas Eve, my dad tried to mediate the situation. He's always been the quiet one, trying to keep the peace, but even he was at his wit's end. He told me he understood my concerns, but also didn't want to see the family split apart. He suggested a compromise where Greg could come, but he would have to stay in a separate area and only join for dinner. I was hesitant, but I agreed, thinking it might be a way to keep the peace without putting my kids at risk. But when Christmas Eve came around, all hell broke loose. Greg showed up, and from the moment he walked in, I could tell something was off. He had that look in his eyes, the one that always preceded trouble, and trouble is exactly what we got. Halfway through dinner, Greg started making inappropriate comments to my sister, the kind that made everyone's skin crawl. My uncle, who's always been the tough guy of the family, told Greg to knock it off. But Greg just laughed and kept going until my uncle stood up and told him to leave. That's when Greg snapped. He threw his plate across the room and it shattered against the wall. My kids started crying and I immediately grabbed them and headed for the door. But as I was leaving, I heard the commotion behind me. Greg had lunged at my uncle, and they were now in a full-blown fight. My dad and a few other family members managed to pull them apart, but the damage was done. The evening was ruined, and everyone was shaken up. My mom was crying, saying she didn't understand how it had all gone so wrong. I didn't stick around to console her. I took my kids and left, vowing never to put them in that situation again. It was clear that Greg hadn't changed and probably never would.
but here's where karma comes into play. The next day, I heard from my sister that Greg had been arrested. During the fight, he had accidentally hit my uncle with a vase, and my uncle decided to press charges. Greg was now facing attack charges, and for once, it looked like he was going to face the consequences of his actions. As for my mom, she's been calling me nonstop, apologizing and saying she should have listened, but I'm not ready to forgive her just yet. She chose Greg over the safety of her own grandchildren, and that's not something I can easily forget. My neighbor's dog wouldn't stop barking at night, so I confronted him, but he just smirked. Later, his car got towed and he begged for my help. I am a 21-year-old male, male 21, who has been flying without any issues throughout my life, but recently had a negative experience. This incident occurred on a flight from the UK, not American, if that matters. I feel like the whole situation was cursed from the beginning because I had to book the flight last minute due to a family emergency. When I booked the flight, there were no aisle seats available, but I found a row of three seats with extra legroom and selected a window seat. Seated next to me was a man around the same age as me, or maybe older, and a woman, female 22, was seated in the aisle seat. The woman was very talkative while the man was very quiet. I wasn't interested in making conversation. Perhaps I seemed sad or worried, but maybe I came across as rude instead. The woman started the conversation and we all made brief introductions. However, with the family emergency weighing on my mind, I decided to switch on my headphones, close my eyes, and wait for takeoff. I could hear the other two talking and moving around. The woman switched seats with the man, so now he was in the aisle seat and she was in the middle. Sometime later, I heard her talking and realized she was making a video. I opened my eyes and she was capturing that moment on camera, briefly pointing it towards me. I let it slide and gestured a small acknowledgement, not saying anything because I had no idea how annoying it was about to become. She eventually turned off the camera and started bombarding me with numerous questions. I wasn't in the mood for conversation, but I understood that she was talkative and maybe I wasn't in the right mindset for someone like that. She was looking forward to an adventure while I wasn't. I answered a few questions briefly and then told her to talk to the other guy because I wanted to sleep. She insisted that she didn't want to talk to him. She wanted to talk to me. At this point, I felt like she wasn't picking up on the hint, so I bluntly told her that I didn't want to talk. This approach worked to some extent. I thought she had finally stopped bothering me because it was silent, but when I opened my eyes, I realized that she was filming me again. I raised an eyebrow in questioning and she giggled. I asked her to stop, but she laughed it off and said that I had only mentioned not wanting to talk and never said anything about not wanting to be filmed. In response, I said, well, now you know. She brushed it off, switched to filming herself and commented to her camera that I was cranky. Fortunately, she stopped filming me after that and finally settled in to watch something on her iPad. I fell asleep when I woke up the flight attendant was offering refreshments, and I requested one. The woman wasn't in her seat, so I assumed she had gone to the bathroom. The man in the aisle seat then told me in our language that while I was asleep, she not only filmed me, but also tried to do silly things like pretending to touch my face, waving her hand in front of my eyes, comparing our hand sizes, and even putting her shoe next to mine. He wasn't sure if he was in any of the pictures she took because he had been sleeping too. He told her to stop, and she did, but he wasn't certain if she continued while he was asleep. He asked me not to bring it up since he didn't want to get involved. I waited for her to return and immediately confronted her about her behavior. Instead of addressing me, she turned to the other guy angrily while he looked uncomfortable. English was his second language. Before she could berate him, I intervened and requested that she delete any footage she had taken of me, as I did not give her consent. Her response was that she didn't need my consent. I gave her a look of disbelief, and she switched to pleading. I was exhausted by this point, so I warned her that if she continued filming, I would complain to the flight staff. She stopped filming me after this. During the middle of the flight, she fell asleep and kept resting her head against me. I repeatedly pushed her away, 
but she frustratingly put her head back. The entitlement of this girl amazed me. I grabbed a pillow and placed it between us, attempting to get some sleep. As we were approaching landing, she asked me to take her camera and film the descent. Not only that, she wanted me to provide commentary as well. I refused to do any of it. This prompted her to start reaching over me to film out the window. At that moment, the flight attendant who was conducting security checks made eye contact with me. She immediately reprimanded the girl, who then straightened up and remained quiet. Some time passed and I felt slightly guilty that she wouldn't be able to capture her desired shot for her vlog, so I offered to switch seats with her. However, she refused, claiming it was too late, although I disagreed. She blamed me for ruining her video and starting her first visit to this country on a negative note. She also accused me of giving her a bad impression of men from my country. She called me a bad ambassador for the brand in her exact words. I couldn't help but laugh. She asked if I was going to make it up to her, and I responded by saying that I didn't realize I owed her anything. I offered to help her retrieve her luggage from the overhead compartment, but she deemed it insufficient. I disengaged from the conversation. I overheard her asking the other guy if men from his country were like me, clearly attempting to provoke a negative response from him. The poor guy didn't know what to say and responded with something like, don't worry, people have good manners. This prompted me to remark to him in our language that he should tell her to work on her manners. She spun around and asked me what I had said. I told her that I said if he wanted, he could help her with her luggage. Anyway, I know there are various content creators out there because I've seen their videos on TikTok, but I had never encountered one in real life until I met this person. Am I the jerk, Aida, for not being understanding, or would you consider my behavior as asshole-like, a ah? In hindsight, I admit that I was in a bad mood due to the situation that forced me onto the plane in the first place. However, I still believe that filming in such close quarters is inappropriate. Yes, it's a public place, but come on, I want to know your thoughts. Or more importantly, how would you have reacted? Now for a few comments before the update. I have a cousin who had similarities to OP's problem, but with a younger guy being all filming and obnoxious. My cousin tried to get him to back off. So in the end, he asked for his Instagram details and the idiot gave him the details. My cousin then said, if any of my face appears on your page, you will be bombarded with messages you don't like and me telling everyone I didn't agree to this and I was harassed. The idiot deleted it in front of my cousin. You should have blasted Disney music, my friend. That always shuts vloggers down for me. The mouse takes its copyright very seriously and will sue her into oblivion if she uploads it. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been two weeks since my last post about the vlogger on the plane, and boy, do I have an update for you. I never expected things to escalate the way they did, but here we are. After that flight, I thought I'd never see her again. But fate had other plans. I was at the airport, returning home after the family emergency had been resolved, and guess who I bumped into at the gate? Yep, the vlogger girl. She recognized me immediately, and to my surprise, approached me with a half-apologetic, half-defensive attitude. She explained that she had reviewed the footage and realized that she might have crossed a line. However, she also mentioned that her followers loved the mysterious guy in her video, which had apparently gone viral. She wanted to strike a deal with me. She proposed that we take a selfie together for her vlog to show that there were no hard feelings. In return, she would delete the footage of me sleeping. I was taken aback. I didn't want to be part of her online world, but the thought of that footage being out there made me uneasy. After a moment of hesitation, I agreed to her compromise, but only if she showed me proof that the other footage was deleted. She agreed, and we found a quiet corner where she went through her phone, deleting the clips one by one. The selfie was awkward, to say the least. She was all smiles, acting like we were old friends, while I just wanted to get it over with. She posted it immediately, and I could see the likes and comments pouring in. I felt like a prop in her social media circus, but at least the unwanted footage was gone. But that's not the end of it. On the flight back, I ended up seated a few rows behind her. 
I kept my head down, not wanting another confrontation. Mid-flight, I heard a commotion. I looked up to see her arguing with another passenger. She was trying to film the guy's reaction to some turbulence we were experiencing, and he was not having it. I couldn't help but feel a bit of satisfaction seeing someone else stand up to her. The flight attendant intervened, and the situation calmed down but it got me thinking about how she hadn't learned anything from our previous encounter. She was still invading people's privacy for the sake of her vlog. As we landed and everyone got up to disembark, she caught my eye and gave me a sheepish grin, as if sharing an inside joke. I didn't return the smile. Instead, I helped an elderly lady with her luggage, trying to show that not all of us from my country fit the stereotype the vlogger girl was probably perpetuating. The guy she had argued with thanked me for my help with the lady, saying it was nice to see some courtesy. I just nodded, feeling a bit like a reluctant ambassador for my country. I made it through customs and baggage claim without any more drama. As I left the airport, I saw her one last time, surrounded by a small group of fans. She was in her element, and I was just relieved to be out of it. My ex-boyfriend tried to gaslight me into dropping my last name for our babies. He played the victim when I said no. Then my ex-husband offered to fake paternity, a twist that could change everything. My best friend, 27-year-old female, started seeing this guy, 27-year-old male, in July. I haven't cared much for him because she's always upset and crying when they end up talking. She found out she's pregnant in September. He wants the child to have his last name but she wants to hyphenate her last name and his. But the big issue with this is because he just wants his last name. They broke up and her last name is her ex-husband's last name. She has two other kids with the same last name as her and their dad, ex-husband, because they were married. She doesn't plan on changing her last name because it's her two kids' last names. So she wants to hyphenate the baby's last name since she and its father aren't together. He told her it isn't fair because she already has two kids with her last name and she didn't hyphenate it with her maiden last name. She said she didn't because they were married so she didn't have to pick which last name to use. He also said that he slept with her and came in her and made that baby with her, not her ex, so it shouldn't have his last name because it isn't the ex's. She wants it to have both his, baby's father, and hers for important documents like school and doctor. So it isn't weird it has a different last name than her completely. He has been showing everyone their messages and they are all agreeing with him on this and been trash talking her. His mom said she needed a DNA test because the baby isn't his because she won't just use his last name. I think it should be hyphenated. My last name was because my parents got a divorce before I was born. I shared one last name with half of my siblings from both of them. I felt included and mentioned this to her, and she agreed, but he said that doesn't matter because it's his baby. She said legally, if they go to court, they'll probably still hyphenate the last name to appease both parties. Is she the AH for wanting to hyphenate them? Please be kind. She's been really upset because of everything he's been putting her through lately. I just hate seeing her stressed out every single day. She's barely been sleeping or even eating. I'm not sure how to help. She just says I can't help with the situation. Edit. I talked to her and she was really surprised how many people were seeing things from her point of view about the situation. He was telling all their friends and family how she's crazy and showing them all their private conversations. She ended up blocking him so she didn't have to be messaged, mean spiteful messages anymore. Her ex-husband said if she wants to add her maiden last name to their children's last names, he would be fine with it if it would ease his ex-boyfriend mind and help diffuse the situation. It's frustrating how her ex-husband is being more understanding and flexible than her recent ex of four months over a last name. The ex-boyfriend also said he doesn't care what the last name is if it's a girl, but if it is a boy, he wants it to have his. He originally wanted her to have an baby, unaliving, four weeks ago. She wanted to also add she is only nine weeks pregnant, so there are many months before it will be here, and she didn't appreciate him stressing her out when she's already having complications with her health. Now, for a few comments before the update. 
Comment one, she offered to add her maiden last name to his last name for the baby. And he said it still isn't fair. He said it should just have his last name because her ex-husband got to have that with their kids. But she said they were married, which is why that happened. She is considering changing her last name and hyphenating it with her maiden last name and changing her other children's last names to include hers so the baby has something shared with them. Comment two, going against the grain, but not the idiot, not the jerk. This isn't about having the ex's surname, it's about sharing a surname with her other children. If she can hyphenate her existing children with her maiden name, fine, but I cannot see that happening. I personally, as a woman, would not want my children all having different surnames. The new father needs to understand it is not about the ex, but about the children as a unit going forward, as it is a blended family. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments and support on my last post. It's been a crazy few days, and I've got some wild updates for you. So, after my friend blocked her ex, things seemed to calm down a bit. She was finally getting some rest, and her appetite was coming back. But then, out of nowhere, her ex started a new campaign to win her over. He sent flowers and a teddy bear with a note apologizing for the stress he caused. It was a total 180 from his previous behavior. My friend was confused, but still firm on the hyphenated last name. Now, here's where it gets even more twisted. Her ex-husband, the one who's been surprisingly supportive, dropped a bombshell. He confessed that he still had feelings for her and suggested they give their relationship another shot. Can you believe that? After all this time, he's suddenly interested again. My friend was floored. She had moved on, but now she was questioning everything. Meanwhile, her ex-boyfriend was ramping up his efforts. He started showing up at her place, trying to talk to her in person. He even tried to involve their mutual friends to mediate the situation. But my friend stood her ground. She told him that his actions were too little, too late. In the midst of all this, her health complications got worse. She had to be hospitalized for a few days, which was scary for everyone. Her ex-boyfriend showed up at the hospital, causing a scene. He demanded to be involved in the baby's life regardless of their relationship status. Security had to escort him out. Now, remember how her ex-boyfriend was only concerned about the last name if the baby was a boy? Well, during a routine checkup, my friend found out she's having twins, a boy and a girl. When she told her ex-boyfriend, he insisted that at least his son should carry on his last name. But my friend didn't budge on the hyphenation. The drama didn't stop there. Her ex-boyfriend's mother, who had demanded a DNA test, started spreading rumors that my friend was cheating during their relationship. It was a low blow, especially since my friend had been nothing but faithful. But here's the jaw-dropping moment. My friend's ex-husband offered to pretend the twins were his to protect her from the ex-boyfriend's toxic behavior. He said he'd raise them as his own, no questions asked. It was a generous offer, but my friend was torn. She didn't want to lie, but she also wanted to shield her children from the chaos. Just when we thought things couldn't get more complicated, her ex-boyfriend did something unexpected. He showed up at her door, not to argue or plead, but to drop off a letter. In it, he wrote that he had been reflecting on his actions and realized how much pain he had caused. He agreed to the hyphenated last name and promised to be a better man for his children. My friend was skeptical, but she saw it as a step in the right direction. She decided to give him a chance to prove himself for the sake of their unborn kids. But she made it clear that any more drama would result in legal action. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.